Well, it's very emotional. You can hear a pin drop in our studio. We've seen it so many times, all of us. We saw it on Friday. It's now confirmed all the speculation, Katie, about where was she, where was she, what's yeah. going on. And now we know. What was your initial reaction when you first heard about that, yeah, that video from her? It really stopped me in my tracks, and it's that dreaded word that no one wants to hear. And I felt really sad for Kate to see her really kind of backed into a corner with having to do that. And, you know, she looked very drained. It wasn't her usual appearance. And I think as a woman and a mother, my, just, my heart went out to her. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you that I felt very sad that she felt the need to have yeah. to do that. Yeah. Because we've talked about it a lot on the show, and I've always said, they've said, you know, they've yeah. said she's had abdominal surgery, major abdominal surgery. Mm -hmm. She now won't be returning to duties until after Easter. And mm -hmm. for me, that was enough. I was mm -hmm. like, we don't need to know no. all the details. And, that was her and I feel now not speak that on she it. has been pushed into mm. because of all the conspiracy theories that were everywhere. Um, I mean, some really, really outrageous conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all on the internet, it's all out there, that she felt the need, like, I'm going to have to do this. And even then, she waited because she wanted the children to be on school holidays so that yeah. they're with the family. So all that time, they had to listen to all these things mm. being said about her. Where is she? Where is she? What's no. really what's going on? What's way, really going family. on? Yeah. And now we know, Brenda, that's what's really going on. Yeah. And, you know, I, I just felt that... Do we have a right to even know that, that she felt she had to say it? Well, I, you know, I, I think that a lot of why she would have said something is because of the kids and because of the effect that it can have on the kids that go into school and other kids who don't know, you know, who don't understand and appreciate the seriousness of the, the, the gossip, as it were, um, of what's, you know, having other kids say, oh, your mum this or your mum that, I think that, that she's done well to try and take charge of that as much as she can for her kids' mental health. Um, you know, I, I just think about when I was going through it and, you know, you don't want people talking about you because you think that they're... You just worry what they're going to say. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's... I, I applaud her for being so calm and being so together with... Um, and it explaining says, it. Uh, I, apparently, that she wrote all of that herself. It wasn't written to, for her by yeah, yeah, PR people or press people yeah. or A's. It was very personal. So even yeah. for her to have to have sat still and written yeah. that I think, must I have been so it's emotional. I think just so, so sad. And I feel like the fact that the British public, people say now, I hope people are feeling bad for writing things and stuff like that. But I think if you're someone who would go on social media, make up a conspiracy theory... I don't think them people will be feeling bad mm -hmm. because they've obviously shown that mm. they're them type of people. So, yeah, I just... I think that was that was terrible to watch. It was like we're forced her into mm. doing this, yeah. really. Yeah. It's a good reminder, though, and not just people in the public eye, but anybody on social media is a real person with a real family, a job, um, you know, possibly kids at school, and just don't write anything about anybody yeah. unless you'd be prepared to say it to their face and really think about the implications mm. for their wider network. Yeah. 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 Good point. <laughs> if, we're, if we're honest, we all like a bit of a gossip, a bit mm. of a talk, but before Only we were we would do that. <laughs> but, you know, you would, I'm sure so many people would have been saying just to their friends and things like, gosh, I wonder what's happened, I wonder what she's had, I wonder what's wrong. You know, that's, that's just what people do, that's human nature. But like you said, Katie, then put it out there mm. yeah. on Instagram and now there are, and there are some celebrities out there now having to do... A, a backtrack mm -hmm. and say, oh, gosh, I'm sorry, I made a bit of a joke about that. Um, you know, that maybe, you know, there, sh there are and should be people who are feeling bad now about yeah. speculating oh, when yeah. she'd already said, yeah. you know, I'm unwell and I'll be back at just after exactly. Easter. Because you said this morning when we were talking about it, if one of us said to ITV, look, I've, I've got to have major surgery, I can't work now until July, that would probably be that. Nobody would then be asking, expecting me to come out and, and yeah. give an apology and tell you what exactly is wrong with me. But would other people around you be speculating and online, yeah. possibly, like, where are you, why yeah. are you not here, you know? So I think it's... It, what, what feels faceless and anonymous very often isn't, and I think we have to remember that. I think social media gives us this entitlement that we can comment on anybody's lives, but mm. we can't, we, we mm. really can't. But then the royal family, people are so interested in mm -hmm. every nuance of their lives and 
you know, the public pay for the monarchy. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why they feel like, well, we need to know, we, we deserve to know, and we yeah. should know, it's our right to know. And I think to a level, but when it's your private, personal health. Yeah. yeah. But I, I want to move on from that, Brenda, because you mentioned, obviously, when, when you had your diagnosis, and if people don't know, Brenda had breast cancer. Um, I heard um, one of the doctors on the, this morning talking, she had cancer, and she mm -hmm. said, the first thing was she remembers the surgeon's eyes when he looked at her and she said, I saw in his eyes straight away that he was going to say it's cancer. Mm. And her second thought was her children, straight yeah. away. Do my first thought that? was my children. Yeah. And, and I've said on here, I, it was important for me to find out all the information before I spoke to the kids. So from, from when I had the, um, the diagnosis, there was another 10 days to wait until to find out how far along I was and if it was treatable mm. and I needed to know if it was treatable. I mean, it always sounds you bad tell when you the say... Children I didn't tell the children away, anything. Right. I went to all of the, the appointments and, you know, when you hear stage three and it's progressive, you just think, yeah. OK, I'm not... I'm, this is not going to end well. And I, I remember telling the... When I told the children, I told the children once I'd found out it was stage three and I was going to be going through chemotherapy and they told me how many and how long, six months and da -da -da -da, and what was going to happen. And I went through all of that with the kids. But it was very important... It is very important to also have a positive outcome as much as you can. You don't want to tell... You don't want to say something that's not true, and that's what... You know, I knew that I'd get asked questions like, well, are you going to die? Mm -hmm. And for me to be able to say, no, I'm not, if you can't you really know, say that, and know. you don't want to say that. And I think in my head, because, because my parents had both died, I didn't want to put my children in that mm. same yeah, so uncomfortable yeah. situation. Yeah. But I remember what I did want to take charge of with my friends was I, I told them about it and I actually said to them, please, if, when you see me, don't do a head tilt or don't yeah. ask me how I am. It's just the way I, I wanted to deal with it. Not everybody's the same because how do you think I am? I don't want to have to give that answer. So if you, if you haven't got anything other than to talk about cancer, let's talk about something else and have yeah. something happy. Don't let and, it define you. And a lot of my friends, you know, there were a few friends that sort of stayed away and because they just couldn't handle it to, mm. to see, see me going through. And did that upset through. you? It didn't upset me because I, I was straight up with my friends from the first point, but I, I also had a couple that would just talk about nonsense just to get me laughing and get my, my head out of that headspace because you're always... The minute you get that... Um, diagnosis, you're always going to be thinking the worst, and that's the first thing at your fore, at, at your at, mm. at your yeah, at yeah. forefront of your mind. But yeah, that must be difficult. Like, how do you speak to someone? I think it's good that you said this is what I want because yeah. I wouldn't know how to confront even no. yeah. my bestest friend. So I think yeah. everyone probably wants to be treated differently. No, absolutely, it. it's yeah. it, it's case by case. Whatever, and that's why that grace works and that time you. to decide what works for you is so important, and everybody's right because yeah. you maybe you don't know until you go down. On that road. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I said every everybody's different. But listen, um, we, we do wish the Princess of Wales obviously all the very best. Um, we hope you get your privacy now, and time to recuperate mm. um, with your your lovely family. Um, and just to say, if you have been affected by anything that we've been discussing there, there are details of help and support on our website, itv.com forward slash loose women. Also, there's information about our very own Don't Skip Your Screening campaign.